about uh, what is a co-op uh, and it's a very different way of living and I wanted to explain my experience of getting into this co-op, the steps I had to take to get in this co-op, and the differences between a co-op and condo. So this is gonna be really informative for people who are looking to buy a condo, for people who don't understand the process and what it means to live in a co-op versus a rental. And I'm happy to share that. So I guess I can get started. It is uh, 101. Welcome everyone. Hello. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining. So um, before I get started, you all know that I'm a native New Yorker and um, we've been living in, in this co-op apartment for eight years exactly. And I want to talk about how we found this apartment, the process, and when we bought it. So before I start, let me just say a co-op what a co-op is, a co-op is a unit where people own shares in the building. So you don't necessarily own your apartment, you own shares in the building. And you have to be approved by a board to move into the building. So there's a, a, a board of directors that have to review your tax documents from maybe 10 years back. You may have to have five reference letters from your job. You have to have a certain amount of income in your bank and you have to be able to afford to buy into the co-op. So how it works is that when you find a building you like, you, I guess, put in a bid for the apartment and sometimes there's a bidding war. So how it works is that the uh, co-op, they'll pick the best candidate for the building and then you have to wait for an interview, which was the scariest thing in my life. Co-ops is like joining a club. And if they don't want you in your club, they don't have to let you in. So we could have easily been denied a chance to live in this building, which is a very nice building. And I'll explain to you why co-ops are really great and um, well-managed and everything about co-ops and why we chose a co-op versus a condo. Co-ops are very, very common in New York City. I think in the Midwest they have them too, but co-ops is are very common in New York City. A lot of people buy into co-op unit, cooperative units like this one. This one, um, so the difference is that cooperatives are ran by board of directors and you have a staff. We have about 11 staff members that maintain the building. So we do absolutely nothing. Our monthly maintenance fee, which everyone has to pay on top of their mortgage or whatever, our monthly maintenance fee covers um, we don't have a gym and we don't have a pool, but it covers like the roof deck, the courtyard, cleaning, garbage takeout, doorman, we have a doorman, and we our money pays our staff, which we have a, a wonderful staff. If you have any questions towards the end, I'm very happy to answer any questions. So we found this apartment during the storm, Sandy, in 2016. And can you imagine, we looked for seven months. Um, I've owned a house in PA, so we already knew the steps of ownership and what it took to buy a place. So in New York City, it's very hard, very, very hard to buy a co-op. Co-ops are much harder to get into. Condos are easier because there's no board in a condo. A condo, you could just buy the unit, own the apartment, um, and the only difference between a co-op and condo is that if someone forecloses in the condo, it can cause financial problems in um, the building. Co-ops, they have to prove to you that the building is financially secure before you buy into it. So we wanted to make sure this building was financially secure and that we were investing in a place that would be good for the long run. So. We found this apartment, we came to the open house, and it was during Sandy, so can you imagine, they were like, we were looking for six months. We looked in Long Island City, we looked in Brooklyn, I think we looked in Dumbo, Brooklyn, we looked, oh my God, we saw so many apartments, and it was not easy. The inventory at the time was insane, and, and people were snatching apartments like crazy. So um, we decided to stay on the Upper East Side, which is a neighborhood my husband is born and raised, and. I, I, I wanted to live in Brooklyn, of course, because um, it's a different culture in Brooklyn, but I'm okay with where we live. 
So the scary part, so we put in the bid and they accepted the offer. Now the scary part. You won't believe how much paperwork. This is why I don't think I ever wanna ever move again. The amount of paperwork we needed to get this apartment was frightening. Um, I think it was like this much paperwork. Uh, credit check, criminal background check, five reference letters for professional, two personal, um, bank accounts from yonder, uh, 401k, uh, everything. They need everything. And you have to wait for the board to look over all of your information and let you know whether or not you have been accepted into this building. We waited a month, a month, and we didn't hear anything. So I'm like, oh my gosh, we didn't get in. And it was it's very scary because you want to live in a nice place, especially in New York. You want to live in a, a nice, safe building. You want to live in a safe neighborhood. And that was really important for us. So um, if we didn't get into this building, I don't know where we would have been living, but I was scared shitless. Um, we finally got a call that they accepted us into the building. And I was like, <gasps> I was like, oh my God, we made it. Okay, so this building is, uh, I would say, it consists of a lot of old people. This building was built in 1955, and our neighbor next to us, she's been here since the building was erected, and she's really old. I think she's probably in her 90s, I don't know, but we have um, a famous sex therapist that lives in this building who is 102 years old, and she's been here since the building was built. <clears throat> so this building has a lot of older people. We're, we're getting younger, an influx of younger people, Lately, we've been getting a lot of younger people that are moving in, and um, I think part of the reason why the rooftop is always empty is because there are elderly people in this building that really don't use the uh, outdoor amenities. So with that said, um, we love the building. Uh, if you have any questions, Dr. Roof, I know people think that, no, I'll, I forgot her name, I'll look it up. She's very similar. She's just as famous as Dr. Roof, and um, She's still alive and she's 102 years old. Um, I should know her name, but I have slight memory, short-term memory loss. Uh, but um, yeah, so a condo, the reason why I don't like condos is because sometimes there's not a good upkeep in the building. Um, there's less care. There's You pay HOA fees, right? And HOA fees can be really, really high. And um, I knew someone that lived in a condo and the hallways were always dirty, the elevators. It's just not maintained like a co-op because a co-op, they select who they want in their building. If they think you're the right type of person to live in their community, they'll let you in. And I like that. I want to be selected. I want to be picked to live somewhere. I want to feel like, wow, I was the type of resident that they felt would work in their build building. So... A condo, you don't have that kind of selective process where someone has to pick you based on your character, based on who you are. It's just more freelance. It's more like, okay, just give me the money. Here, they don't care about your money. They care about you as a person. So when I went in the interview, I was dressed like I was going in a job interview, me and my husband, and they were asking us questions. They wanted to get to know us, the board. Like we, we met in their their apartment. They invited us in their, into their apartment. You know how scary that is. And they're like, trying to get to asking us questions about our background asking us about our education um it was like a real hard interview and uh um i'm not gonna lie i was really nervous and uh, because when you want to live in a nice place it's very competitive and getting in this building is very very competitive so um Every year we have a monthly board meeting where we go and we share our ideas about what we can do better in the building. One of the things I would like to eventually do is see if they can remove the air conditioners from the window this way and put them in the walls. Some people have their ACs installed in the wall. And I'll show you. This AC unit bothers me because I do believe it's an eyesore, but older buildings like this... Um, this is just the way that the, the buildings are equipped. They come with window ACs. So one thing I would really, really like is for a hole to be cut out and put here, but it's a it's a major job. And many people have uh, had their walls cut out to put an air conditioning unit in the wall. So 
Um, that, that's an interesting thing. That, an in interesting thing that would be helpful for many people that um, live in a unit like ours. That's pretty old. But when we when we moved in, we had to skim the walls. We did a little bit of updating, but one thing we would like to do is renovate the bathroom and kitchen. So when you renovate in a co-op, you have to get the board's approval based on what you're going to do they want to know what you're doing what kind of materials you're using and the layout and the the plan and they can say no you can't do that we don't want you know we don't want you to do that we want you you know you have to come up with a whole new plan so you can be told no it's strict it's stricter than a condo it is you can be told no for many things, you, you know, and uh, everything go, you have to go through an approval process, which is kind of like nice because you have communities like you have these cookie cutter homes that they'll tell you you can't paint your door orange, but um, you can paint your door look this color. Some un, uh, interest groups and uh, communities have boards that won't allow you to paint your door a certain color. So this building kind of operates like that in that if you want to do your bathroom and kitchen they have to like what you're doing because eventually you may sell the unit and it has to reach a certain standard right so they're not going to let you knock down the walls and it doesn't keep up um um with the building's codes and uh agreements and things of that nature so do i want to join the board no i i don't think i want to be on a board because i i don't want to be the person that has to sit and make all these decisions I, I I'm already I have so much going on I'm already blogging and I, I, I have to deal with you and then you guys and then to have be on a board it would be just like a third job it's a job right so it's, it's for people maybe when I get old and I I'm retired then I'll join the board because uh, it'll give me something to do but I'm my plate is full so uh, I wouldn't do that but I wanted to get on because I get a lot of DMs ask me what is a co-op and I know a lot of people don't understand it and it's very unique to New York and uh, I just wanted to come on and explain that because many people think we rent this apartment and uh, we don't rent and that's why we haven't done much because we still have to figure out what we're doing and I'm in no rush because a renovation as you know is hell and it creates so much just dirt in your apartment we have a dog, so it's, it's just not that easy for us to um, break down walls and uh, make plans. So if you have any questions, um, just drop them below. I hope I answered. And a rental, of course, I'm sure most of you understand how that works. You find an apartment and you also can be in a bidding war for a rental in New York City. Well, now it's a little bit slower because a lot of people are moving out, but rentals can be really um, competitive in that. Uh, four, may, four people may want your apartment and the landlord can pick who they want. They mean like, well, you, your credentials aren't good enough to live in this building. So um, you can sign a one year lease or two year lease. And a lot of people, they circulate uh, where they move because the rent goes up. And if the rent, go, I mean, we have monthly maintenance and it goes up every year. And my husband's like, gosh, why does it have to go up every year? Taxes are very expensive in New York. So it makes living very difficult here, right? Um, food is expensive, taxes are high in New York, and um, it's just not the easiest place to um, find a, a, a solid place to live. I think it's really, really hard to live here. Housing for people who cannot afford the average rent. Yeah, so some, you know, what's interesting is that some people, some buildings have a rule where 20% of the building has to go to lower income people. So they have to let a certain amount of lower income people in the building. So I think that's really helpful. Um, and the problem is like we have rent control departments and you have rent stabilized. A lot of the rent control departments do exist and you have rent stabilized apartments where they are only allowed to go up a very low percentage in um, rent every year. So if you can get a rent stabilized, um, apartment in New York City that is golden because a landlord cannot raise your rent uh, above the uh, um, percentage allowed for do you think the challenge of living in New York City will ease up now that many are moving away from the city I'm hearing mixed things I'm hearing some people say uh, landlords are lowering the rent um, because people are moving out then other people are saying landlords are actually renovating their apartments to make them better 
for an influx of new people to come in. So it's very mixed. I think it depends on what kind of building. If you move in a doorman building, and they're not gonna be lenient. They're not gonna just be like, oh, lower the price, no. Because there are amenities and staff. They have a staff and people need to pay for that. Now, if you're living in a tenement or a walk-up, yes. If you move into a tenement building, you will find cheaper rent now. Um, that is the honest truth. <laughs> oh, yeah, so the maintenance, so there we have some sick maintenance guys in this building. They renovate apartments, they paint, they do everything. I moved here because I didn't want to lift my finger. I mean, I don't want, when I lived in a house, I painted, I did everything, and I hate painting, I hate all that. So, yes, the maintenance guy, he charged me like $20 to paint, like the radiator. It's like $20. He put the wallpaper in my foyer for $30. So, I have like interior, like interior, like I call them my interior maintenance staff because they do everything for us. They paint, they do everything, and I love it. I, I wouldn't change it for the world to have uh, these great um, people that can do everything. And uh, I'm not ashamed that um, I call people to come to do things in our apartment. I agree with you. I don't think that many people are moving out either because yesterday my husband and I were walking in the street and there were lines in the supermarket outside because certain supermarkets let a certain amount of people in. And I'm like, I thought people left. What's going on? It was, it's still crowded here. So I'm not seeing exactly what everyone else, I mean, like the buildings that people are moving out, like my girlfriend, she lives in a rent stabilized building. She said seven apartments are available, seven. But again, those aren't people that are from New York. Those are people that either lost their jobs, had want to go back to Virginia or wherever, wherever they're from. And uh, that's understandable. They just uh, had to leave. They didn't have a choice. So that's mostly what I'm seeing. I'm seeing uh, transplants leaving, not, um, not that many native New Yorkers. The people um, are here to stay. I mean, we are at the moment not looking to um, go anywhere because I, I, I wouldn't even know where to go. Yep, I agree with you. Yes, we here, I'm here to stay. Um, good, for, congratulations. <laughs> um, another thing is that, um, what else did I want to point out um, about living here? Yeah, um, I think it's going to be probably like low rent now until another year. And I think Broadway is what's keeping, uh, the fact that Broadway isn't opening up yet, it's making people feel like the city is dead because nightlife is really important here. So um, I think um, once Broadway opens back up next year, I'm here next summer, I think the city will have the energy that it had before because um, Broadway shows are what most people come here for and tourists and people from Europe and we, we don't have that crowd anymore we are just um, dealing with local domestic travelers and um, that's it so I don't know if you have any more questions I just wanted to pop in Go for it. what does a basic for rental or buying a um when you say basic apartment what can you give me a little bit more insight because I can answer the question based on uh, what you think I mean I, I just uh, a one bedroom okay um a one bedroom a one bedroom can go for depending on how big it is square footage matters could start at a uh, thousand eight hundred and up go up from there and uh it depends if you get a good building and, and a, a affordable apartment then they go up from a thousand eight hundred two thousand and some are two thousand five hundred sure send it over send it over in a rental yeah so a rental a regular walk-up apartment and i say walk up that means a building without an elevator we have to be very clear here because a building with an elevator will cost a little bit more. It's all about um, function and amenities. So a, a regular one bedroom with a, a with a with an elevator that can be like two thousand and up for a one bedroom. Without an elevator, a thousand eight hundred, a thousand seven hundred a month. You can get lucky. Um, if you live in a building that's fully staffed. 
like ours, like in our building, if we want to rent, we have to get a board approval. Like say we left this apartment and we wanted to rent it, we have to get their approval. We can't just rent it. But um, what would we rent this for? Um, um, <laughs> I think this apartment would rent for like $4,000 a month. So I hope that's helpful. Helpful. Um, any other questions? Any, any other questions? Yep, yeah, it's not too bad. It really isn't. Um, the Upper East Side tends to have, you can uh, find um, some apartments that aren't too pricey in this neighborhood. I mean, you really can. You have to dig, but you can definitely find apartments that aren't too crazy. How's Ginger? She's fine. Thank, thanks for asking. I think you all love Ginger more than you love me. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> she gets more attention. <laughs> Send me an inbox on that tour. Um, do a home tour. I would be love to discuss that. All right, so that's it. I just wanted to explain that. I think um, I can wrap this one up and uh, I'll try to come on and... Uh, Hi, Germany. I'll try to come back and um, talk about things like this. And today is a very casual day because it's raining and I, I haven't stepped out. So this is what I'm wearing. It feels effing fantastic not to have clothes on today and stay home. Thank you. Yes, it's so nice to be able to walk across the street um, and it's, we have, I have a supermarket, east and west. We have about five supermarkets within two minutes away from here. So that's a plus. And I, and I, and I do like the fact that we don't have to have a car. It's kind of nice not to have to drive everywhere. Like in Pennsylvania, we had to drive everywhere. And that was a little bit annoying. <laughs> but um, it's nice to walk. I like walking. So... Is that a good movie? I live on the Upper East Side. Let me just type that here. It's not the most diverse neighborhood. It's, it's, it's mostly Jewish. I would say my area is predominantly Jewish and maybe like 10% blacks. 10% uh, blacks, mostly white, Caucasians, 85% Caucasian. Um, it's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Um, so, yeah, it would be nice if we had more diversity, but I'm okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. So, I'm happy I'm able to pop on here every now and then and chat with you all. Lives are so interesting. They just, they feel, I don't know, weird. It's like I'm talking to people. But I'm not, like, like when you do stories, it's like you're doing your own pace, but live is like in your face, like, so. All right, that's it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. I, um, you all keep me going. And uh, I have an, a home tour coming up October 24th. October 24th, this home tour is going to be sick, ridiculous. It's in a pre-war building on the Upper West Side. And it's one of those charming apartments that you would see in a movie like Rosemary's Baby, but on a smaller scale. And um, I'm just crying thinking about this apartment. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I'm so lucky that I have friends and people that allow me to film their apartments and um, they're not afraid to uh, share their privacy. So that's great, isn't it? Isn't that great? And, oh, and also I have a Halloween home tours coming up video, IGTV. I'm doing that this month. I think this month is going really fast already. I feel like August, October is just, just almost over already. And then November is my birthday month, so I gotta figure out what to do in November. Um, 
I'm going to do two home tours in November, and I have two scheduled in December. So this year's booked, and then in January I have already two home tours booked. So I'm booked until January, and then February I'll start a whole new. I'm trying to pace myself, but um, it's really kicking off. People are really ready to show their stuff, and um, I'm so excited about it. And that's it. So it's a wrap. If you have any more questions, just hit me up in my DM. All right. See you guys later. When is your birthday? Oh, Scorpio. Oh, Scorpio's in the house. Aren't we the best? The most creative people in the world. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Signing off.